Hello and welcome back. We have got the brand new Pelican Personal 14 quart cooler to review and test in this video. And in this video we're going to show you things for this cooler that you can't find anywhere else on the web. We're going to show you what it will hold, how much it will hold, what the top tray will hold, what the dry box on the lid will hold, and how well it keeps your drinks cold under extreme conditions with a torture test. We're even torture testing the dry box to see if it actually keeps the things you put in there dry. There'll also be a link to this cooler down in the description below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there and the bell icon so you don't miss videos like this one. Check this out. Obviously, one of the most important things about a cooler, especially a personal size cooler like this, is what can you actually fit into the cooler. So obviously the upper tray is going to take up some room, but with and without it, let's see what fits. Hmm. Twelve long necks fits, but not with a top tray. Definitely room for ice. They definitely fit. Alright, how about canned drinks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven can drinks fit, and there's room for the two pound pelican ice and the tray. And you can put the one pound up in the tray if you wanted to, or sandwiches, or whatever. So let's go ahead and run a test just like this. We've got eleven can drinks, two pound pelican ice. The tray is in place. We're not going to put anything in it for this test. Close it up. And we're going to torture test this thing today. To make this torture test as scientific as possible, we're going to be using the Tappacue Touch Touch Wi-Fi thermometers with two air probes. One of these air probes is going to go in the cooler. This is going to help us monitor both the temperature down at the drinks and that top part is going to monitor the temperature up here at the surface. The other probe is going to help us monitor ambient temperature. And for the torture test, we're going to set this cooler in my truck. which has a black interior and will include the probe so we know what the temperature gets to. So here's our starting temperatures. 39 and 50 inside the cooler. 39 would be where the drinks are. 50 would be where your food would be in that top tray. And we're reading 73 as the max temperature on the probe that's sitting on top of the cooler in the truck. It's going to be a bright sunny day and inside this truck is going to get blazing hot today. So we'll be able to record the temperatures with the Tappacue cue and tell you what kind of ambient temperature that cooler set in and then try the drinks later on this afternoon. Alright, so it's almost 5 o'clock. This cooler's been sitting in this truck all freaking day. Now one of my air probes, evidently I didn't have it charged up all the way and I lost it at about 5 hours in. But it had already recorded an internal truck temperature of over 100 degrees, 101 degrees. I'll put the picture of that chart from the Tappacue right up here. So let's go ahead and pull it out of there. Man, it's hot as heck in this truck. Let's check them out the correct way. Now remember, a little breezy out here. This thing had this open top on it. That's pretty cold. Nothing but a two pound ice, Pelican ice pack. Nothing special, no other ice added. And let's go ahead and check the temperature here. Feels cold. All right, we are looking at 45 degree beer, and this was in a 100 degree truck for hours. So if you were sitting on the beach for six hours in 100 degrees, you would still have something cold to drink. Man, the things we go through for science on this channel. And again, that was the only ice in it. The two pound Pelican ice pack, just one. That's not bad. But now I think in the interest of science, we ought to run this test again, fully iced like you probably would anyway for a day at the beach. So there's 10 drinks and we're gonna put as much ice in there as we can hold and still get the top tray in it. There we go. So with this test, I'm giving the cooler the best chance at this torture test that we can. The ice is full, the tray fits just barely, and we're able to close the cooler. So let's get the temperature probes in there. 
Again, this probe is able to monitor the ambient temperature on the top and the temperature down in the ice. If I can figure out how to get it down in there, pretty good. There we go. That'll work. And it's going to, again, be a very hot one today. So I'm going to stack the deck on this one against this cooler. This time, we're going to put it on top of the seat where the sun can shine on it and it'll be hotter than when it was in the floor. I'm going to use again the TAPQ air probes and I'm going to put this one right there on the other side of the cooler. This will give us ambient temperature of the truck on both probes and it's already up and running. I'm showing 36 inside the cooler at the ice and 57 on the top. We just did that so they'll continue to decline more than likely. So here's the current view at the start of this test. It's about 9.30. Zoom in on that so you can see the numbers of the probes, both in the ice and the inside of the cooler and the truck. That's where we're starting. All right, it's about 5 o'clock now. These things have been in since around 9.30. This was the high temperature that I got a screenshot of, 113 degrees in the truck. And we were maintaining 32 degrees in the cooler the entire time until the probe actually, the battery went dead in it. So I'm not sure exactly what it is in there now, but I bet it's pretty close to 32. I put a screenshot up there to the chart that I recorded using the TAPQ Touch with all that data. Showed it peaking out at about 115 degrees. So let's see how it's doing. Right now, currently, it was 99 degrees in the truck. So let's try the beer. All right, now the fun part. Sorry about the wind noise. Hopefully that's not too bad. This one, the battery actually died on my probe, but it stayed in the 50s most of the time, 40s early on, in this top area of this cooler. You can see in there, we didn't have any ice up here, so this is where you put your sandwiches. I can feel it's still pretty cool, cool enough certainly for sandwiches, but wanted to do a real world test and look at this. You guys see this. Still plenty of ice in here, so I think I know what I'm going to find when I pull out this. Got our thermometer out. Let's see what we got here. Look at there, 34 degrees 34 and a half degrees that is not bad at all so anyway you shake it if that was a day at the beach you'd have been in good shape all day up to 115 degree outside temperature that's not half bad man that beer is so good i just feel completely relaxed before we get into the dry box test there's one thing we haven't tested yet that we need to test the magnet bottle cap catcher i said we we're going to test everything Worked pretty good. All right, now let's move on to the dry box test. The dry box isn't gasketed, but you've got basically three lips that the water has to get past before it can get into your stuff. It's got to go under this one, over this one, under this one, and over this one before it can get into here. So to test it for dryness, we're going to use brown paper towels in here, which will show anything that leaks. So we got this dry box lined on the inside with brown paper towels which will show any moisture that gets in there. Now let's test it. So let's say you're at your favorite outdoor sporting event and a big thunderstorm comes up and all your dry stuff is in the dry box in a pelican. It's not a storming. Everything's getting soaked. Ah! Pelican jelly. It's cold! We're going to let it rain on that pelican until I finish this drink, and we'll edit this for time. For once, Mother Nature is cooperating with our test. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a little more simulating here, because we're going to use this on the boat. Sometimes the boat gets splashed a lot. We get into some rough seas, and the water would just splash the heck out of everything, coming over the bow like crazy. So a cooler... And a dry box can take a lot of abuse sitting on the boat. So this would be a pretty good simulation of that. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this bucket up and really hit it hard. All right, now, I have not opened the dry box yet. Those paper towels are still sitting in there, just like they were when I put them in there. So, last test. Took one over the bow. Let's take it in the garage where it's a little drier. See how those paper towels made out. All right, we're, we're back in the garage. 
and uh, at least we're out of the way so it's not as cold. Pelican is still soaking wet. Watch. See, plenty wet. Now listen, I'm going to dry this thing off on the outside because I don't want anything dripping on it for any of you guys out there to tell me how this thing didn't work. So if those paper towels inside are wet, it's going to be because water got around that seal. Alright, that's pretty dry. On the outside, let's check out the inside. Yeah. Alright, let's see. We got one little bit right there from all of that. And that was tucked over the flap a little bit. That is pretty freaking good. My hat dripped some right there. That's what that spot's from. Right up here in the front, you see how the seal doesn't quite go all the way because of the catch right there? That's where that little bit of water in the front right there managed to sneak through. But certainly not enough to harm anything. And that was some terribly punishing splashing we put this thing through. So, is the Pelican Dry Box fully submersible? No. Will it keep your valuables safe in pretty extreme weather conditions? Absolutely yes. I think that proves it. So I'll bet your next question is the same question I had. What will the Dry Box actually hold? As usual, in an effort to keep this test as real world as possible, this is what we're going to throw in the Dry Box. How about some truck keys? How about a Samsung Note 10? Maybe an iPhone for good measure. Power bank back up. Wallet with no money, because we have a boat. Power cable for your battery charger. Throw that in there. You might have to play a little Tetris. Taller things are going to need to go in the middle. Skinnier things can go pretty much wherever you can fit them. So yeah, capacity is pretty good for this thing. Keep in mind, it's a dry box for personal effects for typically the one person who's using the cooler. But I think we just proved this thing does a really good job keeping your personal effects dry under some pretty stream conditions. All right, I just thought of another test. Suppose you have this thing with your effects in it. There's a couple cell phones, battery backup, a couple sets of keys. And somebody opens this cooler pretty violently. Stay shut. What if it falls over? It gets knocked over. Will all your stuff come tumbling out? All our stuff did not come out. Still in there. Just for a record, that thing easily held a six pack. It would have held eight with those three Pelican Ice in there. All right, so the last thing to test in a Pelican personal cooler is the top tray. How much fits in that? So there's kind of a worst case scenario. I could get a little bit more in here, but a can of Vienna sausages, a couple of packs of crackers, a little Nature Valley peanut butter bar, a little energy bar there. A big Dagwood sandwich. I could probably fit two in there if I just did uh, Ziploc bags, but I didn't have any. Knife, fork, some napkins, some hand wipes up in the top, and all shuts just fine. Now, if you guys think that I missed anything in this test review video, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think it is. Otherwise, I think we've covered just about everything. This is a great personal cooler for going to the beach, camping, fishing, boating, pretty much anything like that. Even an everyday lunchbox. There's a link to the cooler down in the description below. Check out the Pelican 14 quart personal cooler with the dry box and the lid. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there and the bell icon so you don't miss any videos like this one. We'll see you next time. The things we go through for science on this channel. Well, hopefully something's dry. Ah! Hey, 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 it's cold. That's cold. The pelican, the not me. The wind. The pelican. The windstorm. That's a big thunderstorm.